These are 10 Tailwind tips and tricks that I really wish I knew earlier when I was starting with Tailwind. Also, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced web developer, maybe some of these will come in handy. Tip number one is a beginner mistake that I see that a lot of developers make. If we had here a div that needs to receive a bunch of rows, we are going to create flex and flex columns so they go one beneath each other. And I'm going to create quickly one div with height of 10, width of 40 and background color red 500 so we can see it. And now I'm just going to copy two more. So now we have three rows in our flex div. Now, if we want to separate a little bit our rows and create some gap between, what would developers usually do is place here the margin of one and it's going to work obviously and then they would place it on the third div also and now it looks okay. But the problem here is that usually here these rows in reality they're going to be inside some for loop and also this whole row could probably be some totally another component coming here inside our page. And for these cases, there is one really awesome class from Tailwind. So we can remove our margin top one and we can use here gap of one on our flex div. And we are getting exactly the same thing like we placed margin top on our second and third row. This is also going to work on grid. So if you have a grid and here grid calls one, it's going to do the same thing and you can put whatever the gap you need for your rows. Second tip is that you can actually use a JavaScript class instead of your Tailwind classes. In our case here, we can take our Tailwind classes from our row and we can create a row constant and that is going to be a string of our Tailwind classes. And here now we can replace our class names with our row and it's automatically going to work. So here we can place green and it is going to be green on all three rows. And why is this useful? It's because we can here create row error, for example, and there we are going to have background red and then we can create some quickly some error like boolean it is going to be true and here we can decide if error is true then place row error and if it's not then place just a regular row and now we have our classes changing depending on our boolean value Tip number three is background opacity. So let's quickly remove here all these constants and we are just going to leave one row like this and we are going to write there something like test. And we have our test text here. Now if we place here opacity on our div, something like opacity 50 for example, you're going to see that our text here also is transparent, same like the div. And this one can be sold with one great feature from Tailwind. So here I'm going to remove our opacity 50 and after our background red 500, I'm going to place a slash and then I'm just going to write 50. And this one gives us opacity only on the background and as you can see, our test text is not transparent. It's totally visible. Tip number four is creating nice animations, especially for your buttons. So I have prepared a button here called orc and I'm just going to hit a couple of enters so you can see exactly which Tailwind classes I'm using. So we can start from here. And now we need to create nice hover animation when we get our mouse over the orc button. So the solution I always use for my projects is that I put here the hover. First, we need different color. So we are going to put green 600 instead of 700. So we can see the slight change when we get our mouse over. And then 
I'm going to put also the scaling. So we can put scale, for example, 125 and it's maybe too much. Let's put 105 just like this. Yes, this one is good, but it doesn't look very smooth. It's just when we get our mouse over, it's just instantly bigger and that's it. We need to make it a little bit smoother and to look like a real animation. And for that, we are going to use animation classes by Tailwind. I'm going to create a third row. And here, first thing I'm going to use is ease in, which means like our animation is easing in for our button. Then I'm using transition and I'm going to use the duration of 300, which is 300 milliseconds. And now if we get our mouse over our button, you see how it looks so much smoother than it was before. You can use exactly the same thing for all other elements. So we can put here div instead of our button and we can put to be like something really big, something like this. And now it's going to work also on our whole div. So look how nice it looks. You can use it for like some kind of sections or anything that is clickable to make it look really awesome. Fifth tip is really short, but sweet. Here, if we have same height and same width, we can turn that one to size 40 instead of height 40 and width 40. So there is no need for two classes. If we check the IntelliSense, we see that width is 10 REM and here also, but if we put it to size, we see that it's giving totally the same values for our width and height. So make your code neat and tidy. That's always a good tip. Tip number six is a package and it's called ESLint plugin Tailwind CSS. You have probably seen that when I change the order of my classes, I have here a warning and it's saying invalid Tailwind CSS class names order. So when I save, it's automatically reordering them how they should be ordered. Also, if you make a mistake and for example, instead of rounded LG, you put a round LG, it is going to say that class name round LG is not a Tailwind CSS class. And it's really easy to install it on your project. If you check here my package.json, you see that I have ESLint plugin Tailwind CSS and inside of my ESLint file, I have placed this plugin Tailwind CSS recommended so that my Visual Studio is seeing this rule and warning me here about everything from this plugin. Also, you probably saw it in the last tip here. It automatically changed my height and width inside the size 40. So it's really a valuable ally in your tailing journey. Tip number seven is how to create your own custom colors for something like primary, secondary, or whatever color you need on your project. You can also create here the gradients same like the Tailwind convention. So if we go to this link, Tailwind CSS docs customizing colors, you can see here below when you create custom colors that we can create also the same gradient as Tailwind is creating. So Tailwind really made it easy to create your own teams and you just gotta play with it. Tip number eight is one really awesome extension for your Visual Studio Code and it's called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. This extension is giving us the ability to hover our mouse over our Tailwind class and we see under the hood what happens with that CSS. And also one more for me even better feature is that we can automatically get all the Tailwind classes from just typing. So we have like some kind of search for all of Tailwind classes inside of our Visual Studio code. And now we can just simply click whatever we want for our color and that one is going to work. So here it is inside of my extensions. I'm going to show it to you the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. And 
it's really cool, go check it out, install it and test it out a little bit. Tip number 9 is one problem that is really common when you are working with Tailwind. So here in our div we have our hover that is changing our color to be blue. And here it is, it's just the hover, ring sky 500 and it's making our div to be blue. But if we want to change our text also to be white when we hover our mouse over our div, so first thing that you would do is probably here on this text, you were going to put like hover text white. But the problem with this is that that one is going to work only if we hover our age three tag here. So it's not working when we are hovering our div. So for this problem, we are going to use class name group. So here on our wrapper, we are going to place group. And then instead of hover text white here, we are going to place group hover like this and then text white. So now when we hover over our div, we are changing also this one, the h3 tag, and we can place that same thing on our paragraph here, and it's also going to work for this. So we have everything wrapped up into one group, and based on our hover, we are changing our colors. And there are so many use cases for this group. If we check the documentation of Tailwind here, we see that they're even on hovering some rows, they're displaying something totally different based on that group. So here, if we check, they have a group edit and on hover item is becoming visible. And then they're changing some colors and doing different things only based on that group. I recommend you go to this page for the hover focus in other states and try out everything on some of your projects. And final tip is that you gotta use ShadCN UI library. It's totally built using Tailwind and all the components that you import are your own. And if we check my components folder inside of my AI framework project, you can see that here in the UI, I have button, input and text area and mod toggle also. And all of these components came from ShadCN UI library. And if we check those components button here, for example, you can see that all the code is here. It's not imported from anywhere. It's on my project and I pushed everything to GitHub. So it's my code. And as you can see, they're using Tailwind CSS only inside their components. There is no custom CSS, but they have that cool thing mix with Tailwind merge that is enabling you to override Tailwind classes for their components. And if we check some of my components here, like this AI selector, for example, you can see that I'm placing my own class names inside their button. And it's totally valid. It's overriding the background and the text color and everything. And I'm doing some totally different style than it is in their library. Development time is so much faster with ShredCN. And here, if you check, they have so many awesome components that you can just take and put inside of your project for like this avatar, for example, buttons are really great calendar and so many things that are really making your development much, much faster. I hope you like these tips, warriors. If you want more content like this, join the horde, subscribe.